vision often hinders me to see your plans for me I forget that in every season you're the one who's got me through my thick and thin but you're still so good to me my king Forever I will sing of the wonders of your love, the love that gives me peace, your life, you gave it up for me, there is no fear that will keep your love away from me, I'm alive and now I'm free. I will persevere in the moments For whatever comes I know you're there for me You've been so, so good to me My King Forever I will sing Of the wonders of your love The love that gives me peace I'm free. Even when I can't see what you see, there's so much more than what it seems. Lord, you gave me all these hopes and dreams. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. You gave me all these hopes and dreams I will trust in you I will trust in you My King Forever I will sing Of the wonders of your love The love that gives me peace Your life You gave it We're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast. We're starting something exciting. God is birthing a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the Word. By book, verse by verse chapter by chapter, story by story. We're gonna sit at the Master's feet with total humility and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're gonna start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you.
Oh, hey guys, so Jenna Palakaya, I'm sorry, I was just preparing for the feast online. And I'm so excited. But before that, let me ask you something. Do you remember when Jesus taught us how to love? In times of crisis like today, it can be considered as one of the most perfect moments to show and give love. And ever since the crisis began, the feast has extended its help and love to those in need with what we call the Feast Little Acts of Love. To tell you honestly, this wouldn't have been possible without your help. That's why we, the Feast, are encouraging you to help us give more and more love to those who need it the most. For your donations, you can simply send them through PayPal or through an online bank transfer with the details said here. Oh, and by the way, please don't forget to like and follow our fees online schedule and our fees column in the now page. Here's how you can make the most of Feast Online. 1. Find the perfect device that you can stream with and secure good connection. 2. Sing and worship as if you are attending a live feast. 3. You can comment and interact. When a good idea was said, you can go ahead and type an amen. Or if you have your own reflection, feel free to write it at the comment section. And lastly, we encourage you to tag your friends, share, or host a watch party so that we can reach more and more people. And that's it! Bless others the same way you're being blessed by the feast. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the feast. In today's gospel in the book of Matthew, Jesus was very sure when he told his disciples to fear no one. So whenever we are in our darkness, let's always remember that God is our light. He is our hope. He is love. He is peace. And if you believe that, I invite you to sing praises to our God tonight as we all say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hello everyone and good evening. Good day kung saan ka man ngayon sa buong mundo. Welcome to Feast Sunday, your happiest online space. I am Brother Arlen Velasquez, your servant leader in Feast Jensen. Guys, thank you for welcoming me in your home. Speaking of home, this is your Feast at Home. Where you are loved. May magandang balita ako ha. Watch out for our grand launch on June 29 at 7 p.m. The Feast at Home page. Okay? And I would like to thank all our benefactors and donors sa walang sawa na pagbibigay ng biyaya sa atin. At sa mga gusto pang magbigay, guys, you are very, very much welcome. Alam naman natin, it's more blessed to give than to receive. And we believe that blessings will overflow. Diba? At sa ating mga LO and tights, mga kapatid, meron tayong three ways to give. Okay? Dito ha, magitan nyo sa slides. Ayan, number one is bank transfer. Second is pay maya. And third is yung GCash. Okay? Kapatid, um, hindi ko alam kung ano ng period kay ngayon no sa pandemic pero mostly nasa MGCQ na no or modified general community quarantine period na. Kaya ingat pa rin no? stay safe, stay at home, practice social distancing. Pero sa atin bilang Kristiyano iba. Ano 'yon? Ang MGCQ ay my god Centered Quarantine Yes? Ayan At saka pala sa mga tatay Mga papa Daddy Happy Father's Day God bless all of you Thank you for the love and protection Galing, di ba? So, mga tatay dyan Kawai-kawai, ha? So, sa mga nakikinig na tatay dyan Thank you so much And Ayan Hug your father right now, no? Kung katabi nyo sila Okay? And are you ready? Are you ready for our feast at home? If yes, let us pray our favorite prayer here at the feast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessing, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's honor the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Welcome to our talk 9, New Human. Ayan, sabihin nyo ulit, New Human. Sana na-bless kayo sa ating study no, on the Gospel of Matthew. And it's all about Jesus inaugurating His Kingdom. At dahil dito, Jesus was raising up a new humanity to follow Him. Diba? At alam nyo, sa Old Testament Bible, from Genesis to Malachi, yung Malachi yan siya yung last book of the Old Testament, story to story, na every time ang tao take matters into their own hands and define what is good and bad, apart from God, bumabagsak sila, nawawasak yung buhay nila. At alam nyo, yan ang sinasabi sa Bible na world. Yes, world. Ang world sa scriptures, it doesn't mean planet earth. Okay? Ito ay sistema at lifestyle ng tao na nagdidesisyon kung ano ang tama at manili, ma uh, mali na sa kanilang idea lang kumbaga. Yan yung world. At alam nyo, sa subsection ni Matthew called Sermon on the Mount, Jesus juxtaposed world 
versus kingdom. And using the, the sense of six laws, the law against murder, adultery, divorce, oaths, revenge, and hating your enemies. At dito sa six areas, the people that belong to the world and the people that belong to His kingdom live very differently. So far, napag-usapan na natin ang apat dito. Yes? At ngayon, we will take on law number five. The law against revenge. Bah, grabe. Mga maraming mga karalit nito. Alam nyo ba, ma... Ang pagkakaiba nitong world followers and God followers is our response in getting hurt or being used. Diba? Kumbaga, pumapalag ka ba agad? What if kung sinaktan kita ngayon, binuli kita ngayon, ininsulto kita, anong gagawin mo? Diba? What will be your reaction? So, guys, let us read the Bible passage sa talk na ito. Are you ready? So, together, let's read sa Matthew 5, 5, verse 38 to 41. If you have your Bible, you can read this. Um, together, you have heard the law that says, The punishment must match the injury. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you, on the right cheek offer the other cheek also if you are sued in court and your shirt is taken from you give your coat too if a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile carry it two miles grabe lahat ng sinabi ni Jesus parang kabaligtaran sa pagkakaintindi ng mundo tama ba? interesting yung topic natin ngayon yes So, can I invite you into prayer? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, enlarge my heart. Make my heart so big. Open the eyes of my heart with your message. Give me the capacity to sacrifice myself for others, even those who do not deserve it. Lord, Grant me this grace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's honor the Word of God. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Palakpakan natin ating Panginoon. Thank you, Jesus. Ayan, speak to us, Lord. Inspire us today, tonight. Okay? And now, guys, to continue with our talk, I am so honored to co-preach with this wonderful guy, the fist builder of Tagum, Brother Oying. Go, brother! Thank you, Brother Arlan of Fish Jensan. At happy Father's Day po sa inyong lahat, mga tatay. That was a nice intro for this talk and very powerful prayer. Indeed, we need the capacity to sacrifice ourselves for others, even those who don't deserve it. Good evening once again. I'm Brother Oying, Grasparil of Fis Tagum. Allow me to expound more about the new humanity. Tanong po, Are you following Jesus? Please type in the comment box and send it if you're Jesus follower. And if your answer is yes, then you're one of the new humans that God is raising up. You're part of this new humanity that Jesus is gathering in Himself. Today, I want to preach the message You're bigger than this. Please, pakitype ulit po sa comment box and give us a reply. You're bigger than this. Familiar po tayo sa movie ng Spider-Man. I think for this year 2000, meron na pong na three versions. 
ang Spider-Man by Toby Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland. Sa first two versions po, before Peter Parker was beaten by the spider, he was bullied by his classmates. And one day, Peter got super spider strength. Ay, na, dito ang umpisa ng exciting yung pelikula. Yung mga bullies niya, yung mga tumutukso sa kanya, nananakit sa kanya. Noong una, hindi siya makapaglaban dahil wala siyang skill na makipag-away. But when he got the super spider strength, Peter Parker can now defend. And sa napapanood natin, no? Natuwang-tuwang, napapanood natin yung mga kalaban niya, yung mga tumutukso sa kanya, natatapon dito, tapon doon, uh, baliktad dito, baliktad doon, nasusuntok dito. <coughs> Habang mapapinapanood ko yung pelikula, no? Yung bang nakakatuwa, yung bang ang saya-saya mong, sige, ikaw pa yung gumaganti para kay Peter Parker. Well, very familiar yan sa local movies natin, mga action movies natin. Siyempre, walang iba kundi si FPJ, no? Uh, sa umpisa, ang laging start ng pelikula ay siya yung nasasaktan, inaape, pinagtatawanan. But the next part niyan, or the action star would seek revenge. Yun, inaabangan natin lahat, no? Yung FPJ punch, yung tatatatata, tapos may parang sampal sa dalawang tenga. At of course, yung husa niya sa paggamit ng kalibre 45. That's a local action movie. Let me give you a more extreme example. John Wick, starring by Keanu Reeves. First part ng pelikula, that was so violent movie. Alam nyo ba dun sa part 1 pa lang ng, ng John Wick? John Wick killed 77 people. How did I know? I Google yun na lang. John, John Wick was in rampage. Bakit? Kasi may pumatay ng kanyang aso. In that movie, we want John Wick to win in this battle. Kung nandoon ka sa loob ng sinihan, ma- ma- di ba, nadidinig natin yung mga tao, sige pa, sige pa, yan, 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 sige, pasabugin mo pa, sige, saktan mo pa. Well, kahit na yung John Wick 2 and John Wick 3, talagang full house yung pelikula na yan, no? At inaabangan ng lahat yung John Wick 4. Maybe next year. Bakit kaya kung minsan eh, nakakatuwang panoorin yung mga violent movies na ito? Ha? Yung gusto natin na gumagante yung mga bidang inaape at kaganti naman sila sa bandang huli. Mga kapatid, that's human in nature. Not only humans but all living things, even plants and animals as well. Alam nyo mga kapatid, all living things, plants, animals, and humans have in their core operating system the base instinct called self-preservation. Sa tanim, alam nyo yung tanim na makahiya na kapag hinahawakan mo yung dahon niya ay kusang magsasarado, titiklo. Makahiya, its scientific name is Mimosa pudica. And pudica is Latin na ibig sabihin shy or hiya. Pero, they are not shy at all. Hindi naman sila nahihiya. They're just protecting themselves from harm. Sa animals naman po, kami po'y may alagang aso. Eh, talagang cute na aso, mapaglaro, malambing. In fact, sa loob nga namin ng bahay na yan na natutulog, dito namin itinitira sa loob ng bahay. Pero minsan, ah, uh, natutulog yung aso at medyo madilim dahil patay yung ilaw paglakad ko ay natapakan ko yung kanyang buntot nabigla siya at akma kong kagatin yung paa ko at nagalit siya yung, yung maamong muha ng aso yung cute na muka ay parang nagmukang wolf na handa niya akong kagatin ko sakaling uh, masaktan ko siya ulit That's the instinct of self-preservation. And it shows itself in two ways. Flight or fight, retreat, retaliate, withdraw or wage war. And human beings have this instinct. If someone slaps you, you slap back. Here's a fact. 
self-preservation comes from fear. Almost all unrighteous anger is fueled by fear. We're angry because we're afraid. That's why the words of Jesus are so radical. Jesus was quoting from the law of Moses. In Exodus it says, But if there is further injury, the punishment must match the injury. A life for a life, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a hand for a hand, and a foot for a foot, a burn for a burn, and a wound for a wound, a bruise for a bruise. So, nang tingin po, if you use your modern ears in, it sounds cruel, no? It's something like vengeful or barbaric. Ang tawag sa principle na ito, in Latin, lex talionis. This is was uh, found in Babylonian and Ro- Roman common law. Imagine nyo, ha, itong scenario na ito. If you punch me in the eye, and lose my eyesight, the Lex Talionis principles demands that I punch your eye as well, that you also lose your eyesight. Mina match yung injury. But this was Asian time. For them, this is not barbaric if you just match the injury. As difficult as it may sound, <clears throat> this law was not cruel or barbaric. Merciful na po sa kanila yun. If you just match the injury. The purpose wasn't revenge, but justice. Ito po ha, pakinggan nyo. Because during Asian times, the common practice was 10 eyes for an eye. If you endure me, I endure you, your entire family, even your dogs, your cat, your goat, your camel, and your entire tribe. Halimbawa, kung si Pedro sinuntok niya si Juan at si Juan ay nabulag, si Juan, to claim justice, pwedeng pumunta doon sa bahay ni Pedro nung gabi, igapo siya, tali siya, Tapos si, si Juan magpababaga no? uh, ng, ng isang steel rod no? hanggang sa pumulan na yung, 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 yung sa init, yung dulo ng bakal na ito at sa kanya sasaksakin yung isang mata ni Pedro. Pero hindi doon nagtatapos. Pati mata ng asawa ni Pedro, yung nanay ni Pedro, papa ni Pedro, mga anak ni Pedro, mga apo ni Pedro lahat yun ganun ang justice sa kanila kaya nga pag may pan- sa mga panahon na yun ay kuminakita ka sa isang tribe na puro bunge sabi ya, tut for a tut kung halimbawa sa isang tribe ay puro bunge ay sab- sasabihin mo uy, yung pamilya yan hereditary yata yung mga mga bunge sila ay hindi po ibig sabihin nun isa sa miyembro ng pamilya nila ay nagkasala May nabungian na kalaban at ang ganti nun, buong tribe niya, buong angka niya ay mabubungian. Even if this was a law of justice, Jesus was now saying, I'm raising new humans who will rise above this. They will act differently. They will grow up. They will rise above their animal instincts and express their God image. God's message, again, you're better than this, you're bigger than this. Pakisulat po ulit sa comment box, you're better than this, you're bigger than this. Because we're not just animals. We are the Imago Dei. We are God's image. Jesus' next words, were extremely controversial. The New Testament ngayon. But I say, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. If you are sued in court and your shirts taken from you, give your coat too. 
If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. In these three instances, brothers and sisters, Jesus was talking about common things that Roman soldiers did to the Jews. Roman soldiers would slap Jews, confiscate their property, and compel them to force labor. First point, Jesus was talking about loving our enemies. Second point, he was speaking with hyperbole. A couple of weeks ago, it was preached that Jewish rabbis had this in, in their preaching box. That means they exaggerated to emphasize. He's shaking up. No? In these three examples, Jesus is calling us from self-preservation to self-sacrifice. Why self-sacrifice? Because the greatest tyranny in the world isn't the tyranny of the devil, but the tyranny of the self. Kaya sinabi ni Jesus, Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will keep it. For Christians, self-sacrifice is not an option. It's our definition. Indeed, it's our essence. That's who we are. Ganyan tayo. It's the defining mark of the new humanity that He's raising up. Sabi niya, whoever wants to be my disciple must de deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. I heard some people would say, my cross is my lazy husband or my cross is my talkative mother-in-law. That's possible, but the message is more shocking than that. Isipin nyo, no ikaw ay ancient Jew, ha? pumunta sa nakaraan. When you see a guy carrying a cross in the streets of Jerusalem, isa lang pong ibig sabihin nun, he's the walking dead. He's a gunner. Sa loob, ng 24 oras he will be crucified patay siya that means Jesus follower is, is someone who sacrifices and what does he sacrifice? Ah, ipapaliwanag po ito ni brother Sean Anthony Yap of Fis Dabao Magallanes Happy Father's Day po ulit sa inyong mga tatay. Thank you very much for that wonderful and insightful message, Brother Oying. Gusto ko yung sinabi ni Brother Oying kanina, from self-preservation to self-sacrifice. And speaking of self-sacrifice, gusto kong batiin lahat ng mga nagsakripisyong mga tatay, mga ama, mga daddy. Happy Father's Day po sa ating lahat. Enjoy this day because isang araw lang yung Father's Day. Dahil nagkakaubusan ng tatay ngayong araw na to ng panahon nito, di ba? Kung napapansin nyo sa Facebook, yung lalaki naging babae na dahil sa face app. Tignan nyo yan. So enjoy this day. Happy Father's Day po sa lahat ng mga tatay ngayon. Pagpapatuloy natin yung ating discussion tonight. And we're going to answer the question, what does it mean to become a Jesus follower? To become a new human? Katulad ng sinabi sa ating title, New Human. What does it mean to become a follower of Jesus? What it means to become a follower of Jesus is that this person knows how to sacrifice. At yung tanong, what does he sacrifice? Before I give you the three things to sacrifice, let me also, kasi na, naalala ko, lagi itong sinasabi sa aming philosophy class, yung term na lex talionis na sinabi ni Brother Oying kanina. Nung sinabi niya, an eye for an eye, makes the world go blind. <laughs> diba? Or a tooth for a tooth makes the world toothless. <laughs> Naging train your dragon na gad, diba? Now, the point is this. Yung dapat nating isuko, kasi sometimes pag tayo nagiganti, diba? parang ganun yung nangyayari. Magkakaubusan talaga tayo. Now, to be a follower of Jesus, hindi madali. Kaya nga may kanta niyan, diba? Dili sa yon ang pagsunod 
kang Kristo. There are many challenges in the in the way in the journey that we're following Jesus. Sa karamihan ng mga challenges, ito yung tatlong bagay na dapat nating i-sacrifice. And what are the three things that we need to sacrifice? Are you ready? Paki-type naman sa comment section, I'm ready. All right. Number one is pride. Paki-type pride. We need to sacrifice our pride if you want to follow Jesus. Diba sa ating relationship, sometimes our pride tells us to be right. There's nothing wrong by being right, by the way. Kaso lang, by insisting that we are right, we're trying to prove the other person wrong. And by saying things na dahil tayo itama, we insist on it, diba? Sometimes we hurt other people's feelings. Sometimes we become arrogant. Naging mayabang tayo because our pride tells us that we are right. Nang mamaya pag-usapan natin yan, palalimin natin sa number two. Pero ano ba yung sinasabi ni Jesus patungkol sa pride? Let's read in verse 39. Let's all together read. Jesus said, But I say, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. Ang reaction ko dyan nung nabasa ko yan, what? <laughs> Sinampal ka na sa kanin, bibigay mo pa yung kaliwa, di ba? Tapos hindi ko talaga maintindihan minsan. Pag binato ka ng bato, batuhin mo ng tinapay. <laughs> Paano ka makakaganti? Hindi, ka, hindi siya tatamaan, hindi siya masasaktan sa tinapay. May narinig pa ako. Kapag binato ka ng bato, batuhin mo ng bulaklak. Samahan mo ng paso para may impact, di ba? Yung ganon. Pero hindi yan yung turo ng ating Panginoon. Sa ating mga modern people ha, kapag ikaw ay sinampal, automatic sinasabi natin that is physical violence. Pero alam nyo ba, noong unang panahon, 2,000 years ago, a slap was not viewed as an act of violence, but an act of shame. So, sa kontekstong ito, Jesus was not asking us to allow abuse. Sige lang, hayaan mo lang na abusuhin ka, nasaktan ka. No, if you are a battered wife, Please do not use this verse to justify being a punching bag ng iyong abusive husband. No. God wants you to protect yourself from evil. Now, this verse was not about allowing abuse, ha? But enduring embarrassment. Enduring um, embarrassment. Sa ating society ngayon, this would be an equivalent to being insulted. So here's my question. Have you been insulted before? Na-insulto ka na ba? Sige, paki-type nga. Mag-sharing tayo ng konti. Ilagay dyan sa comment section nyo. Ano yung mga insulto na sinabi sa'yo, binato sa'yo? Diba? Baka naman yung iba, hindi pa na-gets. Na in-insulto na pala sila. Diba? Di, di pa nila na-gets. May mga ganon. Or, nung in-insulto ka, how did it feel? Diba? So, ano yung mga klaseng insulto na natanggap mo sa buhay mo? Sige nga, paki-comment nga dyan sa ating comment section. Alam nyo, when someone insults you, dyan papasok yung self-preservation. Ano yon Self-preservation is about retaliation. Kung ininsulto niya ako, iinsultuhin ko rin siya, di ba? But, I want to share to you the message God wants to tell you tonight. Whenever I feel, alam nyo, a, a desire to retaliate, and I feel these things many times, I sense God telling me these two messages and I want to share this to you tonight. Kapag nararamdaman mo yung tentasyon na gusto mo nang gumanti, alam nyo, meron akong narinig na sinabi ng isang tao. Sabi niya, I don't get mad. I get even. Ako, nakakatakot yun. <laughs> Hindi siya nagagalit, pero gaganti siya. Diba? He will even the score. May mga ganon. But if we have that temptation or that feeling na gusto mong gumanti, this is God's message for you. Are you ready for this? First message is this. You're bigger than this. Sinabi na ni Brother Oying to kanina, you're bigger than this. Halimbawa, kapag may kumagat sa'yo na maliit na ant o na langgam, di ba mararamdaman mo yung kurot nun? So masasaktan ka ng konti. Pero kung ikaw ay isang 100-foot giant, napakalaking dabuhala, napakalaking higante mo, tapos kinagat ka ng langgam, I'm pretty sure hindi mo mararamdaman yung kagat ng langgam. Bakit? Because you are a giant. And get this, my friend. The giant in any room is the one with the most 
love. Ulitin ko. With the one with the most love. In a relationship, sino ba yung unang magpapatawad? Who will take the first step? The one who has more love in his heart. Siya yung una. The, more, the, the one who is more mature. Now, if your love tank is overflowing with God's love, you are the giant. You're the giant in that room. You're, remember this, you're bigger than your hurt. You're bigger than your wound. You're bigger than your anger. You're bigger than your fear. Kaya kapag ininsulto ka, tapos pag may ginawang masama sa'yo, huwag mo silang gantihan. Do not stoop down and fight with small people. Do not become one of them. Kasi pag pinatulan mo yung mga taong yan, nagiging katulad mo rin sila. Now, when people insult you, offend you, or stress you, remember that you are a giant. Pakisabi nga, you are a giant. You're too big to be bothered by small things. Ulitin ko para hindi nyo na, hindi nyo na gets konti. <laughs> para magsingkin. You're too big to be bothered by small things. Gusto kong ibigay sa inyo ang rason. Bakit tayo, sometimes we give in to bitterness and pettiness. Kung bakit tayo nagigive in doon sa feeling na yun, is because you think you're small. Pero, the moment na maalala mo that God made you a giant, that you're loved by a giant God in a giant way, you won't be bothered by small things. Ito paniwala ko, na most of our anger, deep down, comes from fear. Galit ka dahil takot ka. You're angry because you're afraid. And insecure. Kaya tayo nagagalit. Kasi hindi tayo secure. Hindi natin kontrolado. That's the first message. You're bigger than this. So every time you feel the temptation to get back, to get even, to even the score na gusto mong gumante, tell yourself this before you do anything else. I am bigger than this. Take a pause, stop, for a moment and then tell yourself I am bigger than this. That's the first message. The second message is this. Sacrifice your pride, serve your purpose. What do you think? Sacrifice your pride, serve your purpose. Etong lesson sa atin. Kapag tayo nakafocus tayo doon sa ating injured pride, nako, it's a great waste of your precious time and energy. That should have been used to love others, sana. But when you free yourself from the need to protect your honor, you're be- you become much freer to love. Mas nagagampan na natin yung panawagan ng Diyos sa atin. Alam nyo, maraming taon na nakalipas. A couple of years ago, I experienced being stabbed at the back by the very people I trusted and whom I already considered friends and family. May mga tao talagang ganun sa buhay, di ba? Pagkaharap mo, napakabait. Ang ganda ganang sinasabi sa inyo. Tapos pagtalikod mo, binabackstab ka na, di ba? Ganun. So, alam mo yun, in my mind and in my heart, gusto kong gumanti. Just like a human being, <laughs> gusto kong gumanti. Gusto kong, I want to even the score. Gusto ko rin silang siraan. Alam mo yun, ganun. Para patas lang tayo. Gusto kong iparamdam sa kanila yung nararamdaman ko kapag tayo sinasabihan ng hindi maganda. Pero, you know what? God spoke to me in my prayers kasi pinagdarasal ko, Lord. Sabi ko, Lord, ano ba itong nags- nagsiservisyo na nga ako sa ito? Tapos ito pa yung nangyayari sa akin. And then, sabi niya, Sean, wag kang gumanti. In my prayers, I, you know, I felt the comfort of God embracing me. And so, that's what I did. I did not retaliate. I did not answer back kahit na mali-mali or hindi maganda yung sinasabi sa akin. Nilet go ko na lang. Tapos pinagdasal ko sila. And then sa aking pagdasal, sabi ko, Lord bless them. And when I did that, it was liberating. Bakit liberating? Because I was able to focus more sa aking mission, sa aking purpose. In giving talks, in giving retreats and recollections and all that. Kasi hindi ko pwedeng magawa yun kung ako lagi nakatingin doon sa aking injured pride. Kaya basahin natin yung sinabi ni Peter in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Let's read this together. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God called you to do and He will grant you His blessing. 
Grabe, di ba? Yan yung hamon, yan yung salita ng Diyos. Now, let me te- ask you two questions. Number one, is your injured pride destroying your relationships, your friendships, or even your marriage? Yung injured pride mo ba? Kasi dala-dala mo yan eh. Kahit saan ka. Number two, are you taking revenge without even knowing it through subtle ways of insulting the person who insulted you? So yan yung magiging reflection natin ngayong gabi. That's number one, you need to sacrifice pride. Number two is this, are you ready? You need to sacrifice your right. Yung, yung tama, yung ito, para sa akin talaga to, ito yung aking karapatan. Alam mo, dumating sa punto na paglabang ko rin yung aking karapatan because because I injustice was done unto me. So, sabi ko, dapat itong paglaban yung aking karapatan. No, three months to go, magiging permanent na ako sa aking government na employment. Then, an issue came. Tapos, alam mo yun, sa isang iglap, tatlong taon, halos tatlong taon, tinanggal ako bilang guru. And that hurt me. That caused me pain. Siyempre, may pamilya ako, tapos biglang taob yung kaldero ko. It hurt me so much. I did not do anything wrong. And then, gusto kong gumanti. Nagsampa ako ng kaso. Alam mo yon? At sa pagsampa ko ng kaso, it was very draining. It was very exhausting. Hindi lang physically, emotionally drained ako. Pati pera. Siyempre, wala akong trabaho. So, taob. And then, I lifted everything to prayer. Sabi ko, Lord... Ano ba itong nangyayari sa akin? Diba? And when I lifted into prayer, you know, there was an assuring whisper from God telling me, Sean, this is not your fight. This is not your battle. Ibigay mo na sa akin yung laban. And true enough, alam nyo, hiniganti ako ng Diyos. And the revenge was not mine, but God. Alam yung ginawa ng Diyos? Tinanggal ako bilang guro, Ang ginawa ng Diyos, nilukluk ako ng Diyos bilang punong guro. I became a principal of a private school, Catholic school. Ang, sabi ko, hindi, mo pala, hindi ko pala kailangan gumanti. Nasa Diyos pala yung paghihiganti. That's what, I, that's, that's what I learned, you know. And get this, gusto ko matutunan nyo yung natutunan ko. Do not get what you deserve. Instead, get what grace delivers. Pag-usapan natin kung anong sinabi ni Jesus. Okay, in verse 40, Jesus said, If you are sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat to. Alam nyo, ito ay isang hyperbole. Alam nyo yung hyperbole na pag-usapan natin yan last time, na it's an exaggeration or emphasis lamang. The word shirt or shiton in Greek is an inner tunic or underwear. And the coat is a huge blanket na parang bathrobe. Tinanggal yan, yung coat na yan, you will be naked. And get this, the listeners of Jesus knew well the Mosaic law said about the coat. Sinasabi, basahin natin, if you take your neighbor's cloak as security for a loan, you must return it before sunset. This coat may be the only blanket of your neighbor has. How can a person sleep without it? If you do not return it and your neighbor cries out to me for help, then I will hear, for I am merciful. Yan yung sinasabi. The law of Moses decreed that it was their right to keep their cloak. Cloak, karapatan nila na i-keep yung cloak na yun. But Jesus decreed that they give away their cloak. You know, I think his deeper message is that he wants us to Stop focusing on our rights. There's nothing wrong with rights, by the way. Every person has them. But the problem is this. Our problem is that the world is big on claiming for our rights. The kingdom is big on giving up our rights for the sake of love. Kasi ang mundo, the world is obsessed with freedom. But it defines freedom, ha? but freedom is defined as being free to do whatever you want. Kung anong gusto mo, kahit nakasakit ka na, sige, gawin mo, because that's freedom. But you know what? The kingdom also wants freedom, but defines freedom as being free to love. Na malaya ka na makapagmahal, magmahal ng tao. 
And you cannot do that if you have hatred and revenge in your heart. So this instruction also touches, itong instruction na to ah, hindi lamang sa revenge, kundi it also touches the power of our possession. On the power of our possession. Now, hinahambing natin yung world followers and God followers. World followers sacrifice relationships for possessions. Di ba, ginagamit yung mga tao, maabot nilang yung pangarap niya sa buhay. Things before people. Ang pinagkaiba ng God followers is that God followers sacrifice possessions for relationships. People before things. N note, gusto kong i-take note nyo ito. Walang issue ang Panginoon sa atin. No? Jesus has nothing against us owning possessions. Jesus is against possessions owning us. Yung tayo na yung, yung inaamo ng possession na to. Alam mo yun, we are preoccupied by possessions. And finally, sacrifice pride, sacrifice your right, pangatlo, sacrifice comfort. Alam nyo tulad ng paggawa ng video na to, ilang beses kaming nag-take nito kasi ang daming mga biglang, alam mo yun, biglang may tatahol, tapos biglang may, may magtatalik na mga pusa, maririnig sa video, tapos biglang may sisigaw, may biglang, ang daming mga pwedeng mangyari. It's uncomfortable. Pero ginagawa natin to dahil para lang may hatid sa, sa inyo yung mabuting balita. Ito yung sinabi ni Jesus. Basahin natin verse 41. Jesus said, If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it for two miles. Alam nyo, this is very unfamiliar to us. Pero nung unang panahon, remember that an ancient Israel was conquered by Rome. Sinakop sila ng Roman Empire. And according to the law of the Roman Empire, ang sundalong Romano, pwede niyang pwersahin ang Hudyo para siya yung magbuhat ng kanyang mga luggages for one mile. This was what happened to Simon of Cyrene who carried the cross of Jesus nung panahon na yon. But Jesus shocked his disciples by saying, carry it for two miles. Higitan nyo pa yung, yung batas na yon, na one mile lang. Meaning, it's so easy for us to become resentful servants of God. Yung bang magtanim ng galit, we do the right thing, yes, but we do it out of obligation. Doing the barest minimum. Wala nang joy, wala nang passion. But Jesus said, you're bigger than this. Whenever you feel that you're bigger than this. Gusto kong i-share itong dalawang bagay. God's, two of God's very unique gifts that we never pray for, we never plan for, and we never pursue. Bakit? Mamaya malalaman nyo, okay? At ito yung dalawang yon. Number one is divine interruption. Number two is divine inconvenience. Oh, how we despise them. Ayaw natin na interrupt tayo. Ayaw din natin ng inconvenience. Face it, ayaw natin na, alam mo yon may nag-aabala sa atin. Meron tayong ginagawa tapos naabala tayo. Because, bakit ayaw natin yon? Dahil we're so filled with ourselves. Punong-puno tayo ng ating mga agendas, ng ating mga plano, ng ating mga interest. We have places to go to and things to do. We say to ourselves, how dare does this person bother me? Yung ganon, di ba? But that's my point. That is why God wants us to sacrifice ourselves because we're so full of ourselves. Kaya minsan kailangan kanyang interrupt Kailangan may inconvenience kasi baka sobrang komportable ka na sa buhay mo. At ayaw natin yon yung maging inconvenient tayo. At sa panahon ngayon, alam nyo yung comfort and convenience have become our twin gods. Gusto natin maging komportable yung buhay, maging magandang buhay. Okay yon maganda naman yon Kaso lang, eto ha, mga magulang, side note lang sa mga parents. If we give a life of convenience and comfort to our kids, tinatanggal natin yung hirap na dinanas natin, yung usually sinasabi ng magulang is, ayokong mahirapan yung mga anak ko, hindi okay naman yon. Pero, hindi ba yung hirap na dinaanan mong yun ay nagpatatag sa'yo? Bakit mo tatanggalin yon sa mga anak mo? Kaya minsan kailangan nilang magdumanas ng konting sakripisyo, konting hirap, dahil dun sila nagiging matatag. 
at yun ba yung aalisin mo sa mga anak mo? Di ba? Palaisipan lang. That's precisely divine interruptions and divine inconvenience. They enlarge our hearts for love. Kasi para tanggalin yung sarili natin sa ating sariling kapakanan lang. At minsan sinasabi natin, pag may divine interruption or inconvenience, it's just a waste of time. But how can it be a waste of time? Through that interruption, alam nyo, nakamit ka ng human being. And face to face, di ba? Minsan may interruption na kailangan mong tawagan tong taong to. Therefore, you meet that person. You meet God in that person. Namimit mo yung kailangan niya. Maaring yung taong yan nagdarasal ng milagro. Nagdarasal. At ikaw yung sagot sa dasal na yun. Di ba? You meet God because God is the, in that person. Basahin natin yung sulat ni St. Paul sa Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. So let us not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Huwag tayong mapagod. Alam nyo, in the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus taught us to move from self-preservation to self-sacrifice. Gusto ng Diyos na umalis tayo doon sa ating self-preservation. Pupunta tayo self-sacrifice. Pero alam nyo, pinakamaganda sa ginawa ni Jesus. Hindi niya lang tinuro ito. Isinabuhay niya pa to at ginawa niya para masundan natin siya. Siya mismo, He sacrificed Himself for us on the cross. Alam nyo kung anong ginive up niya? Jesus gave up His pride, His rights, and His comfort. Diba? Yung, yung karapatan niya dahil siya ay anak ng Diyos. Yung com- com- comfort niya dahil siya ay nasa langit. Dinistorbo para pumunta sa lupa upang iparamdam sa iyo, Hoy, hindi ka nag-iisa, kasama mo ako. Hindi naman sinabing Hoy, kundi anak. Diba? Kasama mo ako. Hindi ka nag-iisa. Sa krisis na to, nandito ako. Kasama mo. Comfort. And then, sinakripisyo din ni Jesus ang kanyang pride. Anak sa ng Diyos, pero bumabas sa lupa. At alam mo yun, binayuba yung kanyang kamay sa cross. Bakit? Dahil mahal ka niya. God loves you. Tonight, I invite you to receive this love na tinanggal ng ating Panginoon sa kanyang sarili yung pride, yung pagiging anak ng Diyos, yung kanyang rights, yung kanyang comfort para lang maramdaman mo na hindi ka nag-iisa, para maramdaman mo na mahal na mahal ka niya. And when you do, kapag hinayaan mo ang ating Panginoon sa puso mo, your heart will grow bigger. You will grow bigger. You are a giant who receives God, God's love tonight. I want you to become a bigger person. Tonight, I want you to receive God's love. I want you to be that bigger person, bigger than your faults, bigger than your pride, bigger than whatever it is that you're going through right now. Before we go to worship, I want to pray with you. Father in heaven, I pray for the person right now who is watching this video, whatever it is that is being burdened in his heart, in her heart right now. May you be able to remove the pride, the right, and the comfort so that this person may follow Jesus, his path, that he will become a Jesus follower. May this be our highest priority, to sacrifice ourselves so that others may live. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's come and worship God tonight.
thank you so much everyone sa lahat ng ating mga taga-subaybay. Thank you for joining us tonight in our Feast Sunday session, Feast Mindanao. And sa lahat ng mga first timers, welcome sa ating family sa nanood ngayong gabing ito. And I want to thank also my brother builders, brother Arlan from Feast Jensen and brother Oying Glasparil for gracing us their presence at ibahagi yung salita ng Diyos sa atin ngayong gabing ito. And you want to end this night by praying for your dreams. Sa lahat ng mga feasters natin, can you bring out your novena to God's love? If you don't have that with you, let us pray for your dreams. Are you ready? Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father, I pray for the person, this person watching right now, for, for this person's dreams, that you may be able to remove his pride, his right, his comfort, that he may be able to follow the footsteps of Jesus, that he may be a Jesus follower. Lord, this is very challenging in this time, lalong lalo na sa Christ na to. Lord, I pray healing for this person's illness or sa kanyang relationships that reconciliation and healing will flow into the life of this person Lord I pray also for the dreams of this person right now for the struggles that I speak blessing upon blessing glory upon glory to this person that you may open the floodgates of your heaven so that this person may receive your blessing your glory your abundance your prosperity this I ask and pray in Jesus name Amen and Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you next Sunday and be tremendously blessed for our talk number 10. So bye-bye and yeah, next Sunday. God bless you all. Do you remember when Jesus taught us how to love? In times of crisis like today, it can be considered as one of the most perfect moments to show and give love. And ever since the crisis began, the peace has extended its help and love to those in need with what we call the Feast Little Acts of Love. To tell you honestly, this wouldn't have been possible without your help. That's why we, the Feast, are encouraging you to help us give more and more love to those who need it the most. For your donations, you can simply send them through PayPal or through an online bank transfer with the details sent here. By the way, please don't forget to like and follow our Feast online schedule and our Feast column in the now page. same way you're being blessed by the feast. See you on the next feast online.